Dogs and cats, two of the world's most popular pets, loved by millions and considered by many as members of the family. Imagine then, something as innocent as a walk with your dog ending in tragedy. Sadly, that's been the case for dozens of family members who walked across a certain Scottish bridge. What is it that makes dogs jump from the bridge to their deaths? Electrical currents, creatures under the bridge, or something far more sinister? Overton Bridge is a Category B listed structure over the Overton Burn, a kind of stream, at the approaching road to Overton House near Dumbarton in West Dumbartonshire, Scotland. It was completed in 1895 based upon a design by the landscape architect H. E. Milner. Overton is believed to have been what's called a thin place, a place the ancient Celts worshipped the dead, as they believed it was a crossover between the earth and beyond. A thin place was a divider between the physical, tangible world and the other world of dreams, the afterlife and the other unforeseen but very real dimensions hiding behind the veil of reality. They were the first people to have been recorded as living on what is now known as Overton. Interestingly, one of the prominent parts of Celtic mythology is the strange behaviour in animals that the ancient Celts saw as a sign of a bad omen. After the Celts, the land was occupied by the Romans and then farmland for many families over the centuries. In 1859, the Overton farm was acquired by Scottish industrialist James White, who had just become involved in the business of chemical manufacturing. He built Overton House three years later in 1862, basing its design upon Balmoral Castle. When White died in 1884, his son, John Campbell White, inherited the house. Lionel Alexander Ritchie, writing in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography, remarks that he, Baron Overton, would be remembered solely for his peerless philanthropy and Christian zeal were it not for the fact that the source of his wealth was a chemical works, where the wages and working conditions were scandalous. White led the Sunday Rest and Lord's Day Observance Society, but nevertheless insisted that his own employees work seven days a week, docking his workers' wages if they took time off to go to church. The millions he donated to various charitable causes came at least in part from paying his workers some of the lowest wages in the country. In response to the various claims about working conditions, Thomas Legg, the first medical inspector of factories, visited White's Chemical Works and others, and his report, which was published in 1900, concluded that some 83% of workers in the chrome factories suffered from a perforated or ulcerated septum, and 22% from unhealed chrome holes, which were deep ulcerations of the skin, sometimes even penetrating as deep as the bone. The Chemical Works is notorious for the chemical waste it forced the local population to live amongst. In 1884, Campbell White started planning to extend the driveway of the house across a deep ravine in order to provide easier access and hired the landscape architect Henry Milner to design a bridge. The bridge was constructed using rough 
faced ashlar and was completed in June 1895. It comprises three arches, a large central arch spanning a deep valley at the bottom of which flows the Overton Burn, flanked to each side by lower, smaller pedestrian arches. During the Second World War, Overton was turned into a convalescent home for injured soldiers and locals, and the house remained mainly isolated and was not damaged by the bombings of the nearby Clydeside shipyards. In 1947, Overton was turned into a maternity hospital. A fire destroyed part of the house in 1948, although there were no deaths and the hospital remained in operation until the 1st of September 1970. It also became a Category A listed building in the 70s. During the 1950s, locals started referring to the bridge as the Bridge of Death or the titular Dog Suicide Bridge as it was reported that dogs were leaping from the bridge into the ravine below. The story gained more prominence during the late 2000s and early 2010s. Since the original incidents were reported, at least 50 dogs have died from the fall, but allegedly over 600 have jumped but still survived. In 2004, Kenneth Meikle was walking with his family and golden retriever when the dog suddenly jolted and jumped off the bridge. It survived, thankfully, but was traumatised by the experience. Going into 2005, at least five other dogs also jumped over the course of the next six months. In 2014, Alice Trevaro was walking her Springer Spaniel Cassie when she reported a strange experience on Overton Bridge. Quote, I'd parked up, and as she's so obedient, I didn't put her lead on. Me and my son walked towards Cassie, who was staring at something across the bridge. She definitely saw something that made her jump. There's something sinister going on so out of character for her." End quote. A number of other theories have been proposed as to the behaviour of dogs on the bridge. In 2014, canine psychologist David Sands proposed that the surrounding foliage gave the, in reality, extremely steep drop off the side of the bridge the appearance of even ground combined with the residual odour from male mink urine in the area could be the culprit for luring dogs, all long-nosed dogs, to jump off the bridge. This theory was protested by a local hunter and resident of 50 years, John Joyce, who stated that there were no mink in the area. However, in an investigation by the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, Officer David Sexton found that one end of the bridge, reportedly favoured by dogs, contained nests of mice, squirrels and mink. Furthermore, in an experiment in which 10 dogs were exposed to canisters filled with mouse, squirrel and mink scent, seven of the dogs went straight to the mink scent, many of them quite dramatically. Some have speculated that the bridge also is in fact hollow and perhaps contains a secret passageway from the house. Could it be that noises from within the structure itself are what's confusing the dogs? The Scottish Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals has investigated the bridge and surrounding area but none of their findings have yet proved conclusive. In 2019, the owners of Overton House, Bob and Melissa Hill, said that in the 17 years of residing at the house, they'd witnessed a number of dogs become agitated, jump up and fall from the bridge. Bob Hill, originally a pastor from Texas, stated that the scent of mink, pine martins and other animals agitated the dogs, resulting in their jump onto the bridge wall. Quote, the dogs catch the scent of mink, pine martins or some other mammal and then they'll jump up onto the wall of the bridge 
and because it's tapered, they'll topple off. End quote. However, Hill also stated his belief that the grounds of the house held some sort of spiritual quality. Local teacher Paul Owens argues that the bridge and nearby Overton house are haunted by supernatural activity. He claims that the dogs and other animals are sensitive to such supernatural activity, so proposes that dark spirits are responsible for luring the dogs to their deaths. Locals don't just think the bridge dweller is any old ghost. She is thought to be the grieving widow of First Baron Overton and is better known as the White Lady of Overton. Local law has it that after mourning her dead husband for 30 years and then dying herself, the lady has been hanging out amongst the living in Dumbarton. But who is Lady Dumbarton? Well, in 1845, Grace Eliza was born, daughter of Glasgow solicitor James H. McClure at West Regent Street, Glasgow. In 1867, she married John White, son of James White, owner of the chemical manufacturers. After marriage, she moved to Crosslet House in Dumbarton, home of her husband's great uncle. Thereafter, on the death of her mother-in-law, to Overton House in Dumbarton. Overton House, where she continued to live after the death of her husband in 1908 till 1917 when she moved back to Crosslet House, where she died in 1931. She became Lady Overton in 1893 when Queen Victoria granted her husband a peerage. When Baron Overton, who built the bridge, died in 1908, she was said to have wandered the bridge grief-stricken for years. Mr Owens, a religion and philosophy teacher in Glasgow, said that people who had been on the bridge had described going from being happy one minute to sinking into deep depression the next. October 1994, paranoid schizophrenic Kevin Moy threw his two-week-old son to his death from the bridge because he believed that his son was an incarnation of the devil due to a birthmark. He chose the location due to its association with dark spirits going back to the Druidic days. Following the act of murder, Moy then attempted to commit suicide several times by jumping off the bridge and slashing his wrists. He was eventually detained and placed into a mental health hospital. Owen states, quote, He was found to be mentally ill, but I know a lot of people believe that the bridge has some mystic powers. A lot of people have experienced a strange presence on the bridge itself, and many have seen ghosts around the estate. I had a very strange experience when I was researching my book and taking photographs of the estate. I was standing on the bridge and I felt a phantom finger jab me in the back twice. It felt like I was on a train platform and someone was trying to push me off it. It was very scary. End quote. Local man Eugene Hogan, whose golden Labrador drift leapt from the bridge, states, quote, Something just gripped it, something went through it, like a poltergeist. End quote. Ian Fisher, a retired officer who ran a dog walking service, is another witness who tells his story. He walked across the bridge towards Overton House with Jess, a border collie, stating, quote, I noticed a grey, shadowy figure standing at one of the bay windows. It was there for a few seconds, and then it was gone. What was strange was that Overton House was unoccupied at the time. End quote. So what, or who is it, that causes the dogs to mysteriously jump or fall from the mysterious Overton Bridge. Mink, running around their nests next to the burn. Echoes from secret chambers hidden within the bridge. Or Lady Overton herself, forever walking the bridge, lost in mourning for her dead husband. <laughs> 